Uh, most of the discussion is focused on uh, the problems of loose monetary policy, lax regulation. But I want to spend a minute uh, trying to explain why it is that we had those loose monetary policies. Uh, and the underlying problem was an insufficiency of global aggregate demand. Uh, I don't know if you remember at the uh, end of uh, World War II, there was a worry that uh, we would go back into a depression. And one of the reasons for that worry was uh, a worry that there would be insufficient demand to keep the, the economy growing. Well, uh, the reason that the monetary, uh, the, the Fed uh, pursued this lax monetary policy was uh, in the absence of that, there would have been insufficient demand. We would have had uh, an economic downturn. So the question is, why is there, was there insufficiency of global aggregate demand? And there are two reasons. The first is the increasing inequality in most countries around the world. And it's a really striking phenomenon. Um, actually, if you look uh, you know, in the United States, as we know that even though there's been growth uh, in GDP, most people are poorer today than they were eight, nine years ago. Median income has been falling. And that's true in most countries around the world. So the reason this is a problem is that uh, what we've done, in effect, is transfer money from people who expend it to people who don't spend it. And that lowers aggregate demand. In the United States, we try to get around the problem that the people at the bottom's income was growing, was, was, was getting lower in real terms by telling them, don't worry, you can continue to spend as if you had income. That is to say, we encourage them to go into debt finance. And uh, in a sense, it worked pretty well for a few years, but it was clearly not sustainable. In the United States, what made things worse uh, was the war because what the war did is contribute to rising oil prices. Uh, rising oil prices meant that Americans were spending hundreds of billions of dollars a year to buy, to import oil. Again, back in the 70s when this kind of thing happened, uh, there were, was a severe downturn. Uh, it didn't happen this time, and why? Well. What happened was the uh, Fed allowed, had low interest rates that fed a housing bubble, that fed a consumption boom, that enabled Americans to continue to consume even though we were spending so much money on imported oil. Uh, the result of this was that our household savings rate fell to zero. And again, clearly not a sustainable policy. Uh, I sometimes jokingly say it was exactly the policy that Latin America pursued in the 1970s. It was the one part of the world that did not have a major crisis after oil prices uh, rose. Um, and uh, evidently people studied what they did and they got all excited about this debt finance as a way of getting out of the problem of rising oil prices. But what they forgot was that uh, that Latin America ran into problems, and uh, they had a debt crisis in the beginning of the 1980s that led to a lost decade uh, in Latin America. So that's one reason for insufficiency of global aggregate demand. The second reason is related to actually the crisis that the world faced a decade ago, the global financial crisis of 97, 98. The way that crisis was managed by the IMF and the U.S. Treasury was a disaster. Countries lost their economic sovereignty. Uh, the IMF pushed them into uh, pro-cyclical policies that converted downturns into recessions, recessions into depressions. Um, if you want to get a feeling of how badly things can be mismanaged, unemployment in uh, the central island Java of Indonesia got up to 40%. So we have a way to go yet to uh, reach uh, those achievements. Um, the consequence of this badly managed, bad management of the global financial crisis 
was that countries decided uh, to use uh, you know expression that, that they would never let this happen again. And I've talked to prime ministers, uh, uh, both the countries that have affected and not affected, who said, we've learned the lesson of 1997. One of them said, you know, I was in the class of 97. So uh, the way, the only way they had to protect themselves was to build up large reserves. Uh, and they have built up literally trillions of dollars of reserves. China's reserves by themselves are $2 trillion. Well, the reserves are good for protecting them, but it means that these countries are not spending all their income. So it contributes to a global insufficiency of aggregate demand. And one of the things that concerns me as we discuss the details of how we get out of the crisis, uh, stimulus, uh, uh, mortgages, uh, the bank, we aren't paying attention to some of the underlying causes that got us into the problem uh, about the uh, huge inequality and the global imbalances. In fact, the way we are managing the crisis right now is likely to lead to incentives for developing countries to get even more reserves, making it more difficult for us to uh, emerge from this crisis with a robust recovery.